Hey there, it's Chris from Good Roads, back down in the dungeon. A little while back, Joel over at 3D Printing Nerd, and if you don't know Joel and you're not watching 3D Printing Nerd, get over there. A wealth of information. What are you doing? Get over there. Maybe wait till this video's over, but like, mostly just, you know, you can always come back. Go check out 3D Printing Nerd. Anyway, a little while back, he did a project where he 3D printed a bunch of wheels for his son's scooter. And that was a really cool project. He did a really good job on it. And towards the end of the video, they had a version that worked, but they ended up kind of grinding it down and blowing it out. And I left a comment just giving my thoughts because I had been thinking about a similar project for a while too. I wanted to see if with flexible filament, which is thermoplastic urethane, that's what TPU stands for, if you could print the kind of things that are made out of urethane that you use on a skateboard, like bushings or wheels. So I just kind of gave my thoughts, and I figured it would be as good a time as any to put my money where my mouth is. So I designed and 3D printed some skateboard wheels. So to run you through my thinking on this, what I wanted to do was kind of reverse engineer a professionally made skateboard wheel. This is a wheel by the company, well, it's under the brand 3DM. They're owned by Seismic. Seismic makes awesome urethane. I really like their wheels a lot. But I wanted to start there. When you get a wheel that's made by a skate company, it has two parts. It's got a hub, which is a hard plastic, probably injection molded interior. And then it's got a soft-ish cast urethane powder part of the wheel, which is what makes contact with the road. Those two parts together make up the whole wheel and they serve slightly different functions. So the point of the hub is to give some stiffness and rigidity to the wheel, but it's also to make a nice, strong seat for the bearings. Because if you were just to seat it in a soft urethane, they could wobble, they could get misaligned, and the wheel wouldn't work as well. And then the qualities of the urethane are really kind of what give the wheel its character. Whether it's soft or hard, whether it breaks out easily or grips, and this magical quality called rebound, which is kind of how the urethane reacts to being compressed. All of those things and the shape of the wheel itself kind of determine the qualities the wheel has when you ride it. Given the materials that are available to us with 3D printing, we can get a pretty close facsimile of this. So here's what I did. The first thing I did was start looking at how it would be possible to print these two parts. And this was my first prototype. It's large. I decided to scale down with the final one just because of the amount of material this would cost. But this is the hub, and this is what would be the urethane part, what is the urethane part. And together they make a wheel. I designed them so that they could be printed relatively easily. The only place that requires support material is the inside face of the bearing seat in the hub. And I couldn't think of any way of getting around that while still maintaining a 90 degree angle in that face. And you can see here, this is kind of how it comes off the printer and I'll go through and clean that up later and show you what I'm talking about. I thought it was pretty important to have a nice shoulder for the bearing to sit against in there. So I did want to make sure that it was 90 degrees, even if it meant cleaning up a little support material. But other than that, we've got two pieces and they fit together. Tolerance on this is a little loose, which is also something I improved in the later versions. But the whole idea is that the geometry of the hub and the geometry of the exterior of the wheel are designed to be printed just like that with as little support material as possible. So that being my first prototype, the second prototype that I made was smaller. I wanted to see if I could reduce the amount of material that I used. But when I came off the printer, it was very narrow. I didn't really like the contact patch. If you compare that to the wheel that I was kind of basing this off of, you can see that it's only about two thirds as wide. So I made one more prototype, which is this one, where you can see both the wheel part and the hub. And the hub is already seated, and you can see that I got that clearance much better because I ain't going anywhere. And I was really happy with this design. It, it looks like a wheel that could be pretty fun to ride. It's got qualities that I like. It's got a kind of square lip on the back. It's got a sharp lip on the corner. So the next thing to do was to pull the trigger and print a whole bunch of solid TPU wheels. <laughs> I've got a TiVo Tornado. I've got a couple upgrades on it. I've got an E3D Titan and a Volcano Hot End. So I did print this with a one mil nozzle. Ooh. I did print this with a one mil nozzle. And it took a long time. Each kind of tire, if you're thinking of it that way, each part of the wheel that wasn't the hub took about six hours to print. It was very slow. Well, not all that slow considering, but um, I'm not very patient. <laughs> and then I printed 
printed the four sets of hubs, which are also solid, but these are made from a reinforced PLA. So they've got a little bit more structural integrity than a standard PLA. And I think that's gonna be important because I think the hubs are the part that are probably going to be experienced the most shear forces when we start writing. Now, one other thing that I was concerned about is in that video that Joel made, I saw that he really had to crank on what he called the tire to get it onto the hub of the wheel. And his parts weren't solid, which I mentioned in the comment, I think that's probably part of why they didn't work quite as well as he had hoped. These are solid, which means they're going to flex a lot less, and I was a little concerned about being able to get the hubs into the wheels without deforming them. So I also designed these tools. This is a cradle, which has kind of got the inner profile of the outside part of the wheel. So the wheel can sit right in there and it's supported on the walls and it's supported on the bottom lip. I think that is going to be helpful because as we're putting a lot of down pressure into it, it won't bow or bend. I really want to make sure that the hubs are centered and square so that when we put the wheels on the trucks, they're not wibbly wobbly. And then the other tool that I designed, the other half of this set of tools is this. This is a, it's just a bushing seating tool. If you have a drill press, this will chuck right into your drill press. You can put the, the hub onto this tool and then use all the force from the drill press to seat the hub in the wheel, hopefully. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna clean up the support material on this one last hub, show you guys how that works. And then I'm gonna set up a little workspace around the drill press, use it like an arbor press, seat all of our hubs, take it from there. So first I'm just gonna go in with a knife and kind of cut away the edge of the support material from the hub. My first layer on my printer elephant foot's pretty bad and they tend to overlap. This is just gonna make it a little bit easier for me to remove the support material. And then I'm gonna take these. These are a set of wire bending pliers for jewelry making, but I really like them for removing support material because you can kind of get in between different layers and kind of crank. I just find them really useful for this purpose, so that's my tool of choice. And there you go, relatively clean. This is gonna have the structural integrity we need, even if it's not pretty. All we want is a nice, solid face in here for the bearing to rest against. So I don't want to rely just on friction to make sure the hubs stay in the wheel. I went back and forth between what type of adhesive I thought would be best. I was considering super glue and an epoxy. The epoxy would get in between all the layer lines and lock things in place, but it doesn't offer much in the way of like rotational stability. It would really stop the hub from moving this way, but I don't know that it would stop it from moving this way. Whereas super glue is a little bit more of adhesive. so it might stop the rotational force, but it's a little bit more brittle, so it might not stop the lateral force as much. I'm gonna run with super glue on this experiment. It's, I don't know. <laughs> we'll just see how it plays out. I'm sure either would work, and, and I may just be over engineering things. If it fails, it fails. Just a little bit of glue on the hub, and hopes that things stay in place. There we go. Drop that down into the well that it goes in. Make sure that's nice and centered. There we go, that keeps it nice and square. And we can just squeeze it down into place. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, let's do three more. So there you have it. Full set of solid 3D printed wheels. The material that I used for the hubs is Polymaker's Polymax PLA. It's a impact treated, kind of reinforced PLA. It's got a little bit more structural integrity than your standard PLA. And the material that I used for the wheel itself is just kind of a generic TPU, no brand in particular. 
95A, which is the rating on the shore hardness scale. For my tastes, that's a little hard in the wheel. I like to ride a little bit more in the low 80s, but for the printer I have, this is about as soft as I could get. If you had a printer with a direct drive extruder, or if you had a Flexion extruder, you'd be able to get some of those filaments that go down into the lower durometers, the low 90s, high 80s ranges. And all that's left to do is put some bearings in them, put them on board, see how they ride. So let's do it. So, they work. Super exciting. Let me say a little bit about how they ride. They roll very smoothly. They do feel like a little bit softer than a 95A wheel. And that might just be a result of the fact that the material was 3D printed and not cast in place. There's probably some air in there. Probably some places where the layers don't quite meet up on a microscopic level. Microscopic level. I would say the one downside for now is that they don't hold speed very well. If you're pushing, every push doesn't get you as far as a uh, traditionally manufactured set of wheels were, or if you're going downhill, when you get to the flat, your speed doesn't carry as far, so they don't hold momentum very well. But when you're going downhill, or when you're in the push, they feel just like other wheels, and I quite like how they ride. They corner well, I like the way they grip. Once you've got some speed built up, I like the way that they flow as you're riding. And I'll say that as the day went on, they carried speed better and they got better. And they, they might just need to be broken in. So earlier in the day, the elephant foot that was happening on the wheels, you could tell by the way that they were wearing out that it was preventing the whole surface of the wheel from even touching the ground. So I imagine as that wears down and as the individual layer lines wear down and we kind of just end up with a flat surface on the wheel, that it'll be a little bit smoother and ride a little better. Will it compare to a normal cast urethane wheel? I don't know. But I'm going to keep them on my board, keep riding them, see how they develop over time, because just in the course of a couple hours of riding today, they got better as it went on. So this was a super quick, easy, fun, successful project in my book. And because I had such a good time with it, because it worked out so well, I want to make sure that you all can get involved in it too. All the files are going to be available on my mini factory. The hubs, the outer wheels, the cradle, and the wheel seating tool, in addition to a bearing seating tool, which you can use for normal skateboard wheels too, both of those chuck into a drill press and make it a little bit easier just to make sure that everything's in place. All of that will be available for you to download. I'm super excited about the possibility the system offers, and I'm excited about the kind of exploration it unlocks as far as just experimenting on the cheap and getting a really good indication of like different types of wheels that can be made. But I'm also excited to see what you do with it. We know for a fact now that you can successfully 3D print skateboard wheels and I want to see you guys make some of your own. Grab the files, try different materials, try different wheel geometries, try different sizes, try weird stuff and let me know how it works out because I'd love for the board building community to really get out there and start experimenting with wheels. If you have interest in that kind of stuff, in the DIY, board building, board making type stuff, especially if it involves 3D printing, this deck was pressed with a 3D printed mold. I'll link a video to that down below. Check it out if you've got any interest in it. It was a pretty good experiment. And if projects like that are your cup of tea, that's what we do here. 
make cool DIY board stuff. Put the projects out there and try to explain how I do them so that maybe you could take a swing at it yourself. You know, if you hit that little subscribe button down below, you can come check in on us every now and then, see what we've been up to, pick up some information, and join in on the journey. So until the next project, I'll see you soon. If that's your cup of tea, that's what we do here. So, you know, give us a subscribe and come back. <clears throat> I hate self-promotion. I hate it. <laughs>